Hello, all, and welcome to the Fantasy and Sci-Fi Fanatics podcast. I'm your host, Dana Kubal. Today, I'll have me a very special guest, round two of trying this interview, Christina Silva. Christina, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Oh, excellent. Excellent. It's ironic that we both wore the same colors as yesterday and everything. (laughs) Well, it was just in case, you know, consistency, right? Let's just change outfits. You can see we can edit it all together. (laughs) It happened to be another time earlier last season uh, for season one where a buddy and I uh, had to do that. And we're both just laughed because we just we didn't even talk about we just both showed up and um, I was actually in my wife's office. So I was like, I'm just going to keep doing here. And (laughs) it was really funny. Uh, but yeah, so I'm sure some people know if they've watched for a long time, sometimes things just happen. So Christy and I actually tried a few times uh, yesterday, you know, to get things to work and it didn't. So, so glad you could come back and, you know, we could get things situated for you. And uh, the internet, the library is a lot better after I've um, updated my laptop for the 500th time. Um, <laughs> Fourth those time of you who are listening, <laughs> those who are listening <laughs> know that I'm getting a new laptop. So hopefully by after this episode, um, it will have arrived. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Christina, we'll start again like we did yesterday with that first question. What has your writing journey been like up until this point? All right. So, for writing, I, I my mom is an English teacher. All right. So, I grew up reading a lot of stuff. Like, I was reading Edgar Allan Poe and like Ray Bradbury when I was like nine. Okay. I love so, Ray Bradbury. It's, yeah, Fahrenheit 451, The Illustrated Man. Like, I love sci fi, I love fantasy, you know, Lord of the Rings. Like, I'll be honest, I didn't actually read everything for Lord of the Rings. There's some things that are just too long for descriptions. <laughs> Sorry, don't hate me. <laughs> I just yeah. wanted to get some action at that point when yeah, I was young. Yeah. Uh, but C.S. Lewis, you know, like all those inspirations, Roald Dahl, also, you know, like I just, I grew up reading a lot and I was homeschooled for a few years, which is kind of why I'm so weird. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. there's, there's weird quirks, but uh, my mom, she would assign us homework during the summer. Also mm-hmm. terrible writing assignments. So we'd like write journals and okay. she'd take her red pen. She'd make it bleed, you know, <laughs> give us back bleeding papers, fix it, you know, go back and rewrite. So crying at the keyboard is kind of how I learned to write and I kept my story ideas kind of to myself just because Mm -hmm. um you know I didn't know how I I wanted to share with people but I've been kind of one of those people who just kept it all to myself for a long time and then 2019 and 20 when everything was going downhill for the world everyone's quarantine if you will um my husband turned to me and he's like you should finish these ideas. Like my husband, he will not read it because he's not a fantasy guy, but he'll support me. And I I appreciate that. So mm-hmm. he was like, just, just go for it. Finish this while you have time. And I got part of um, some writing groups because of Wattpad. I started posting my stuff there, like writing a chapter, adding an illustration, pushing it out for the world to see. And, you know, I got some nice positive feedback and then was invited to Discord groups. and uphill since there like hey I guess I can share my ideas and it's not like oh my god that's so dumb you know like I haven't heard that yet so knock on wood hasn't happened yet um but the writing journey went from just I don't know if I should share to people like my crap yay like you know so I I appreciate that and I went ahead and self-published like that's you know I have enough positive feedback coming my way to where I felt confident enough to just go for it and self-publishing made the most sense because my husband and I we travel and play music together and we go to different states we used to go to Canada a lot too before COVID yeah Uh, because we're we're in Grand Forks so we're like what like a little less than two hours below the Canadian border so we go there a lot try we play and like Wisconsin and Minnesota and South Dakota and North Dakota and Idaho sometimes and Omaha, Nebraska. And that's kind of like our loop for music. Mm. And I self-published and I bring my book on the road to sell at shows now. So it's been doing pretty well and it helps with gas money for traveling for music. (laughs) So it it, it all works together. I do all the art for my husband and I's band stuff. So it just made sense to like sell my stuff all together. And yeah, started doing that earlier in February and it's been going well. So I have a book signing too at the end of this month in the middle of nowhere, Grand Forks, North Dakota, Ferguson's Bookstore. It's on July 29th. And um, yeah, I don't know if anyone's going to drive several states away to see it, but (laughs) I'll be there. So yay. But okay, there's, there's my writing journey in a nutshell, if you will. 
So it's gonna drive right. me nuts because somebody else is um somebody else is from that way that I um am friends with on Twitter. Um what what bookstore? Uh are you gonna be at a bookstore or? yeah, Ferguson's book bookstore? Um uh, there's the say, Grand Forks. Else was just over there. Oh, it's legit. I know there's like a Bismarck location. I forget oh, what the other one okay. is, like three different ones. I'm in the Grand Forks one because that's yeah. like right down the street for me. And yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited for that. So that'll be yeah. my first official book sighting. And you know, I will I'll flaunt. So there's there's my book. And I wrote great. thank you. I wrote and illustrated it and I went all out with made up languages. Oh, that's a really and, cool map. Thank you. Um, and there's a spy. I wanted it to kind of look cool too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That looks excellent. So thank you so much. There's there's like 75 illustrations. So I have like illustrations oh, wow. in every chapter. And um, I have an alphabet in the back and I have name pronunciations because oh, wow. that's that's very helpful. Yeah, yeah. And I guess I'll just do a quick shout out too, because there's a lot of people who I want to thank. And I added a bunch of Wattpad names, oh, that's cool. people's public profiles, like what they're comfortable sharing. And I had, you, you interviewed her actually, Chloe Quinn. Uh, oh, I have yeah, her too. Yeah, Chloe, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. she's fantastic. And she also has a fantasy book. So shout out to yeah, her yeah. too. And let's see, Sean Scruffy. I know he goes by like, what is it? Nolan, um, what's it? Serpent's Game. That's on hmm. Amazon too. But yeah, I have yeah. his, I have his Wattpad profile on here. Oh, I that's think. cool. But I want, you know, those two people for sure are like self published authors, support yeah. them. They're great people and they're very talented and they have fun stories if you like fantasy. So, like, yeah, yeah. there's oh, that. That's cool. That's yeah. a, do you know, um, do you know Heather Smith by chance? Heather, I think I do. Right. I don't think uh, I'm talking a lot, um, but I, 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 like, probably part of her. I think, I wonder if she, um tagged herself as like fantasy romance or paranormal romance um yeah I had her on I know that her and like Chloe um oh my god now I'm gonna blank on the other two women I got like a bunch of them through Chloe for February she wrote um so that was like really cool um yeah so I had like the whole Wattpad group there <laughs> like, for a little <laughs> while and, uh, yeah. like, send me some more people it was very it was just so much so much easier that way like I got um Oh, uh, Susanna Evans that way. Um, I interviewed so many people last year. But yeah, I got like several women from the Wattpad group and the Discord group. So that that's was, awesome. Yeah. We got one and the rest. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. There you go. Well, they were like, yeah, this guy's doing up. this thing for February, she wrote, which now next year, like, I want to do, like, I want to do it far in advance. So actually, I'm only filming up until October for season one, but we're actually going to not post anything um for February I'll do February I'll do the rest of season two after that I'm only I'm doing like a February she wrote um like mini season or okay. mini series so um yeah so I'm inviting any you know female authors that have been with us before and a few others and I'm trying to get uh, as many done in November uh in December as possible for February I'd love to have like I'd love my goal would be to have like three a week <laughs> um be kind of hard with holidays and stuff but we'll see how far we get but yeah it was that's, really fun that's awesome yeah like these like I yeah you've been to read some people I I met through the discord server I actually give a special shout out for someone like the, the one person who kind of like started it all for me or like reached out to me first on Wattpad Rowan Carver that's her public profile um on Wattpad and I love her book King Eden and she's like one of the best sci-fi writers I know she's not published yet but she's is a work in progress but just read her story like she private messaged me and she's like hey do you want to be part of like my discord group and oh, she's cool. the reason why like I got connected with all these people and she kind of like kickstarted it all and I appreciate her dearly and I hope she gets published someday because she totally deserves it. So just have to say that because she's great. Yeah, yeah. So, I appreciate her. And she helped keep me sane, you know, during yeah, the pandemic. Yeah. Like I swear the Discord groups and the writing groups, like all these wonderful people, like they're the reason why it's like I got inspiration to keep going, you know. Yeah. Just like, oh, people, you know, like my stuff. Yay, that's cool. And then yeah. it's like, 
these people are amazing too. Like their works are so good. So that's why there's a huge special thank you at the back of this because there's too oh, many so people cool. yeah, that yeah. need recognition that totally deserve it, have great works out there. So like, yeah, yeah. you know, one little thing I can do, just, just one yeah. little thing, right? No, that's really cool. I was talking to my friend the other day. I was like, oh yeah, I gotta think this person, this person, like my foreword is gonna be like massive. So that's actually a really, really good idea to put towards the back instead. It's just, uh, I think that's a good section to have. So maybe some other people will, will think about that as well. Like I gotta think my mom, my third grade teacher, and then, you know, people <laughs> that actually write and things like that. So um, yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. I like Mark Timoney and I, I had like three or four interviews so far um for three for season one we did like three parts it was like ours like I was at an Airbnb it kept getting messed up so we had to do like three um and then I just interviewed him again recently but him and I talked quite a bit um privately and stuff and uh he's been very encouraging um for me and my own fantasy world and stuff like that so and then Definitely. a couple other people were helping me out so I was like man this like forward list is gonna be it's gonna be like bigger than my book at some point so <laughs> <It's> <laughs> right really, really good idea that's awesome uh well, that is yeah. super cool that it's nice, right? When me and um, Alicia uh, Klapik were talking about that yesterday, where, you know, people just helping each other out in the indie community, you know, it just seems like a good place to be a part of. I think I enjoy doing the interviews and things and being online just as much as, you know, doing the writing and everything, because everybody's always like, um, David Green was like, I put something up. He's like, oh, that sounds just like my urban fantasy book. And I was like, wow, that's like a really nice compliment, you know, because his uh, had been, you know, pretty popular and stuff on Kindle. So yeah, it always, always feel good when you can find a little niche in the community, so to speak. That's right. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I mean, that's where the inspiration comes from. People yeah. being like, hey, I'm interested. And then book swaps are wonderful too. And you go, oh, yeah. oh my God like your ideas like I love your story too you know I mean it's just building each other up that kind of community that's like the best you can have that's the best group you can be in yep. ever so yeah. yeah totally no I totally agree uh yeah. we'll start also with that second one there so <clears throat> I'm gonna try and not mess this up today <laughs> okay I know I'm gonna mess it up <laughs> I mean we can just like edit here all well, right. It's funny. It's just funny because I so I teach history and one of the kids um um I was like I said a couple of Chinese things. I was like Lua Yang and something else. And they were like, there's no way that's right. So they looked it up on Google and they were like, Oh, Google Translate said you are right. I was like, Yeah, this is like the subject I teach. Uh but yeah, sometimes it's really funny because I'm like, you think I'd be better at just overall, you know, language by now and you know, <laughs> something like that. Uh, but it's interesting. Uh, so what is your fantasy story? Uh, the Chronicles of, is it Soria? Soraya. Ah, I knew I was going to mess it up. I knew That's I was going to better. Uh, Soraya, and, but uh, uh, Thaneu? Yeah. What Academy? Did I get that one right? Yep. Oh, perfect. I'm, I'm I am that person that like, I, I have so many worse like ways of pronouncing words where I'm like, for my own fantasy stuff where I'm like oh it's gonna be this and I don't think anybody's ever gonna be able to say them out loud so I'm gonna have to like come up with my own movie or something uh but what it what are those stories about because when I was looking them up they sounded really interesting after you sent me the links all right so this is a fantasy with a dash of horror and anime elements and um just some psycho elements too actually the so story. that's Thank all you. The, all the things like I like that. Oh, so well, just because it's a good combination doesn't mean it's actually good, right? Like I, I can't inflate my ego too much. Um, but you can read it out for yourself if you like it. But so it's um the, the chapter one starts off with main character Soraya dreaming about being with her mom and her mother is pregnant with her with Soraya's younger brother. And the mother starts going to labor and Soraya has to go find help because they're kind of all by themselves trekking along. And um, they find Soraya finds this older elderly guy, comes over, and he doesn't want to help the mom as soon as he she sees that she has red eyes. And so it's basically I have anti-racist sort of um, mm -hmm. messages throughout, and it's because. Um, people with red eyes come from a different country and Azakwa, that's also why the book is blue. It's because the 
the, the country this whole all takes place in is Zakwa, where people have blue eyes oh. and people with red eyes are seen as foreigners and you know go back to your country which is you know terrible um so Sarai wakes up and the mother is dead and Sarai cannot remember how her mother died and her father Tishva cannot remember how his wife died so they both have this gap in their memory of what happened to the mother and they have graveyard in their backyard that's where the mother is lying and they just don't know what happens and Tishva Sarai's father is losing his memory mm -hmm. and becoming a danger to himself and others so much so that he forgets he has a daughter oh. which is why Soraya is sent to Darkwood Academy to live there while the father tries to figure out why am I losing my mind is there a cure what's going on with me and this this academy is where Tishra went when he was younger so while Soraya is there she discovers some clues about her father's past and this book one is kind of like world building establishing the rules establishing this world etheria and uh there are i technically delve into two magic systems i'm not going to spoil the second but the first magic system has to do with etheria i have elemental symbols on each corner of the book because you know, fire water earth air and elemental magic in this world etheria you're not born with it you harvest it mm -hmm. and so you have to be so, like an archaeologist you have to have a license to harvest and use magic and you harvest it by like basically at the memorize the pattern imagine it going onto your hands or wrists because you by switching finger positions you switch elemental magics oh, and you can draw upon the power for a little bit it becomes a tattoo on your skin and when you use it the tattoo fades and when you use it completely, you're out, you have to go find more. So in some ways it's kind of hard to hoard magic on your body if you can only yeah. find so much. At the same time, you can harvest magic and put it on inanimate objects, and which means it's going to stay on that inanimate object as long as it's you know intact. So that's how people in higher positions hoard magic for themselves and keep it away from common people because you know they can hold on to it and like a sword can last two thousand years or something if you keep it you know intact whereas if you die with magic it goes back into the ground it's recycled Sounds so good. that's i i try to keep I keep the uh, elemental magic not something you're born with just anyone can use it if you learn how and it's supposed to be meant for everyone but of course government won't allow that right yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's and so Soraya's father, Tishva, he is an archaeologist and he gives Soraya magic before she goes to school. So she has to hide that because it's illegal for her to have it and use it. She does not have a license, but the father doesn't want her to die. Yeah. And there's a subplot going on of girls with blue eyes going missing. And I don't want to spoil too much, but everything does come back and tie in. I don't just have a subplot that just you I say it once and it goes away forever it comes back into play and there's a lot there's a bigger picture going on here and I can only say so much unfortunately because yeah. book one is kind of like the reveal upon the reveal and I will say this no one has ever guessed everything yet I feel like I projected all my punches and I have so much foreshadowing and I felt like I was giving away too much mm -hmm. but so far no one's been able to guess everything so I'm very happy about that and this is a series so the giant one on there uh, but that's the idea i will not go into magic system two because spoilers so there's there's that um the main overarching series is going to be father and daughter both finding out the truth and coming back mm. to confront each other oh. so that's that's the overarching plot if you will it's, it's their relationship and all the revealed truths about the past and the past coming back to haunt and the daughter having to you know make decisions so that that's all i can say oh, that's cool. well i hope i hope that made sense yeah 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 totally it sounds really good um i liked uh when you were talking about like the tattoo magic like i have something similar with the urban fantasy series i have working on that i'm almost done with my first novella for uh Sweet. novella um 
yeah, I have like in the first book, so I have like these others, so all mythological creatures and entities for the most part, some are from here. Um, so sometimes you think that something is mythological and it's from what I call the other and they're the others. Um, so it's from this other realm. And But sometimes you have a creature that actually is just from earth. So sometimes it's kind of hard, um, but they actually, let's say like a vampire, I got two different vampires, one's an elder vampire, like most people see, but they're actually from this other realm. Um, they might be able to infect you, but you actually, as the vampires, as we know, wouldn't be able to infect anybody. So Dracula was actually one of these elder from this other like plane and they actually when you kill them um they i have it where they calcify um into like this powder essentially and i have this mantra monster hunters guild where they actually give you tattoos in different runic shapes and things from this ancient empire civilization that actually released this realm of the other here and that's where we get all our mytholo mythological creatures and beings and i have where they cover up with ink the with the powder but it only lasts for so long um so if you use the power too much or too often it goes away and you have to get the ink back so it's funny nice. because i just was talking to somebody else just want to point out to the audience because i feel like you could very easily like i want to do this exercise where we have listeners give us four main parts of world building and characterization so they might say like oh for instance um the world building is that there is very little land and the land that's here is rocky on this planet. The rest is water. So you and I both have to work with that as the geography of our world. And then they might give us one thing about the magic system, one thing about the main character and one thing about maybe like the, how the class system works or caste system works or whatever on this planet. And then you and I take those four main parts, which are the same, but then we take them and write two different stories. Because nice. that's what we all do, right? And I want to do yeah. that as an exercise because I think do think it's important to point out that like Dirk Ashton said that like he had a lot of things similar to American gods, but he had never read American gods. Um, and then after he read it, he goes, Oh, I actually need to change a couple of things on how I my magic system. So it's funny that we both did to me, it's funny that we both did similar things, but in a like totally different way, you know. And I think it just yeah. goes to show you that we're just so unique as, you know, as a species that we can take the same thing, but make it, you know, two completely different stories or parts of a story. That's really cool. Oh, absolutely. That That's the cool thing about your storytelling in general. Like yeah, yeah. elements can be similar, but you get a wholly entirely yeah. different story yeah. out of the same elements. And that's what makes it fun, you know, like. Yeah. That's why I like retellings, you know, like I feel like retellings are always fun because somebody always does Robin Hood or Cinderella or something and it might you know have that original source material as the you know same thing the world building right or characterization yeah. but still there it's you know like curse I think it's why people like curse so much it's really just the Arthurian you know story um you know taken to um you know I think a much deeper level um you know it's really good <laughs> so you know I think I think you're right I think it's just it's just interesting to me to see so that's really cool it sounds sounds awesome so Thank you. That, uh, this is definitely the podcast for for your product, so you're on the right one. Um, I always tease our audience. I always say after an author explains it, like if you need more than that, then this is probably the wrong podcast for you. So, because <laughs> so you get um, to tell me when your series is done too. Oh, for sure. I would yeah. need that. I love all that stuff. Oh. Like, well, like I I was stuck for so long, and I do credit. That's why I was saying when you were saying you have this whole you know section in your book. I feel like I have to thank every author that's come on the podcast because um, like I'm talking to you before I go home, you know, I'm going to work again and then I'm going home and, fin you know, finishing up at least a scene or two of my novella. And it's like, I always get the best out of my writing session after I've talked to another author um, because they said something that got my mind working or, you know, just something. So I hope that, you know, the audience is, you know, finds it just as helpful as I do because especially from a writer, I do. And then I like to talk to authors before reading their books because I just feel like it's like the director's cut then, you know, and I get yeah. a lot more out of it as a writer and a reader. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. No, absolutely. Um, we talked a bit about the third one for the premise. So we kind of got that one out of the way, um, which it sounds awesome, by the way. I mean, I really liked how you have the overarching themes um, there, you know, I mean, Thank you. family is such a good one, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> family relationships I mean you know and it's like um 
me and Alicia were talking yesterday and I was talking with my class too, or, you know, on Friday where it's like, there's just certain things that are just common themes, right. And that everybody can relate to. And I think, you know, family yeah. struggles or, you know, secrets or, you know, whatever is just a, it's just a really good one. That everybody can relate to. Sins of the past, you know, all yeah, that. Yeah. Stuff. That's a really good way to put it. If that's not a, if that's not a title for you. It really should be uh, in the future. That's, that's a really good one. I like that. Uh, so how did you go about creating your characters? Um, you talked a bit about your world, but the characters in particular, like, well, I guess the world too. I'm just curious at how this story came to fruition, you know, like where the idea for this plot in particular came from. Okay. So again, love for fantasy and sci-fi and I do have other dimensions and I deal in, you know, there's different magic systems. Um, all the characters are based off people I know, like all okay. of them. And I, I couldn't help myself. I had to do it because <laughs> it's like, <laughs> these are my favorite personalities. These are like my favorite people. So I'm like, you know what? Okay, I might as well do that. And a lot of people like the characters. And it's so funny to see how, like some people really love the main character, all right? Mm -hmm. I wrote her as like my younger self because that's what I relate to, right? And some people <laughs> are like, oh, I couldn't relate to her very well, but I can relate to these other characters, side characters, right? And it's like, that's, that's so cool. And there's one character I have, I can't spoil who he is, but um, based off one of my good friends in real life, right? So some oh, people cool. just love him and some people are like creeped out by him. And I love it, you know, it's just like the dark sense of humor. I can like, because <laughs> my main character, she's, you know, she's younger, she's like 13. So it's like, everything's great, you know, even though everything's not really great. It's like kind of like death and decay all around, but she yeah. still has like, you know, positive attitude. And then I can put that with like someone who's way more jaded and way more experienced. Who is just kind of like, don't want to ruin your innocence yet but just so you know you're gonna you can't think like that forever you can't always be trusting you can't always like yeah. that's the truth that's that's reality you know yeah, yeah. about growing up and realizing that as you get older it's not all rainbows and sunshines you know it's it's not as glorious as you think yeah. but you can still find a reason to smile or something to hold on to to keep you you know rooted in like some sort of sanity you know like life's going to throw curveballs at you. And what are you going to do? Are you going to like sit down and cry? Are you just going to like do the best you can with what you got, you know? So like a lot of uh, comments I've gotten is um, like, I write it pretty simply. Like it's very, like, I, I do have some flowy language, but I don't go like so poetic that I don't even understand what I'm writing. <laughs> you know, I am terrible with poetry. Like I enjoy reading. It doesn't mean I completely understand it. So I just keep everything more blunt and to the point, but I can have deeper meanings, even though it's easy to read, I can throw a bunch of different layers of stuff that kind of reflects the reality that, and everyday stuff we're dealing with, you know? So that's, that's fun. It can be layered and deep, even though it's not written on a deep, poetic oh, oh yeah. my god this is so dense what am i reading kind of story you know so it's it's simple to read with layers that's the easiest way i can describe it there's a guy over there he's finishing his third book i believe and he's over there like crying right now into his long beard <laughs> with his working on his prose <laughs> like, oh, at like wait a minute that's possible <laughs> <laughs> right like there's some people who write just I love what they write and I'm just like I don't I don't even think like that how did you yeah, you know I mean how did you even come up with that sentence yeah. I love it but it's so like you know it's like such garnish on garnish I can't yeah. my brain does not think like that I'm like just tell yeah. me this is or open or close you know what I mean like yeah, just, yeah, yeah. but I use lots of vivid colors and some people point that too like I because I'm an artist first so I'm a very visual person I want people to visualize what I'm writing. So I will describe, but I'm not going more of the rings descriptions of three yeah. pages on a tree. You know, I'm not yeah, doing yeah, that. Yeah. Like I can't, my my focus is not capable. Like I started off like my first draft, I realized I had way too many descriptions. And I was like, <laughs> some of this stuff is important for book two and later. And I'm like, no, 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 wait, it has to be important for now. So I can yeah. like briefly glaze over it. And then I can expand on that later and be like, see, that little detail was actually much more important than you think. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what I mean, like, it's like, oh, you yeah, like, I know what you mean. right? It's like, but this is important. 
I want to draw some attention, but not so much that you're like, why are you saying, you know what I mean? Like yeah, that's yeah. more or less. And there's some things I still leave a mystery. I don't answer everything in book one. I, I don't do that on purpose because I feel like if I did, then what will be the point of continuing to read, right? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's, okay. I don't, maybe that was, is that enough? I, I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. It's just funny that you said that because like I in my novella right now, I'm like writing on like everything has a purpose and I'm worried that people are like, oh, that part's boring, you know, because everybody just wants, everybody does that with Marvel or, you know, TV series now. It's it's a 10, it's like what, Obi-Wan can, Obi-Wan's like six episodes. It's like people couldn't even wait to criticize it until they found the full arc. And now people are like ranting about it. It's like, well, no, you just wanted like pure action adventure and it to be the most harrowing thing ever, but with no buildup. It's like, I think right. people need to look back at like, you know, the climax resolution, you know, and um, just like the steps of a story, you know, and like they're doing their best in six to 10 episodes, but it's like, you know, and a lot of times they're also overarching, right? With the other seasons too. And it, you know, there's, there's multiple things like, um, but it's funny cause I, you know, like I was like, well, I really hope people understand that I mentioned this thing in my novella in one of the first scenes. and if you get to the end of the novella, you're like, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. You're like, oh, why was that there? But then you're like, holy crap, by the end, like, you it's know. Like the best reaction, you know. Story. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like those it's little kernels that pop into the popcorn, you know, like. Yep. It's funny how well, some I, people aren't patient for it, but. There's like one thing, I, I will say what the, the thing is, and I can say why it's important. Like there's, I have it as, was it chapter six? I drew the statue in front of the town and I cannot say how it's important right now, but it absolutely comes into play in book oh, two. Cool. And it's like, I have all this like lore and stuff, but I can, you know, again, it's like what's important, what's not. So yeah, like yeah. this thing will come into play. This little tiger statue oh, is cool. like, oh, okay, whatever. I have like a Zodiac theme too, like, oh, or cool. I call this, it's a Zodiac, but I call it Zodiac because it can't be exactly the same. <laughs> cool. right? yeah. So Very like, that, I like it. It's important, but at the same time, not so much for book one, but it becomes a crucial part of the, the theme and arc in book two and three. So there's like, you know, I, again, I can't spoil it, but that's, anyway, you, you get it. Like eventually yeah. when it's done, then it's like, oh my God, you thought about that. It's like, you have to, you know, you know how it is. Like, I, I don't know. Do you write to where it's like overarching theme and then some things write itself and just connects itself like, you know yeah I like I, how do I, you I usually go through the first time like I've been so I've been trying to redo that from my first stand uh well my first I have a, a heist novel is for the first one and but I have a I have an overarching theme of that one is like um like these two young kids they're best friends and the, the one he really wants to become part of the thieves guild a massive fortune because he's seen people do it they're both really poor they're like both like it's like two Aladdins, you know, and yeah. the other one gets dragged with them. Well, by the end, you realize that like what they actually wanted was two different things. Like the one other character, he just does this whole stealing thing because he just wants to stick with his best friend. And he doesn't mm -hmm. want to be alone. Whereas the other one does it because he's more selfish and he wants certain things and he claims it's for his friend too, but doesn't. And then right. you know, it's, it's basically the whole arching theme is friendship. Um, I also have an overarching theme of redemption. Um, so I do think about that, you know, in the, in the long term, because um, I know where they're going to go in book three, you know, and I know a lot of crappy things that happen to them. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, I think it's, I think a lot of times some people, I like books like that, though, you know, that have overarching themes, um, not just yeah. in one book, but, you know, overall, where it's like, oh, that had a purpose, you know, and yeah. I'm not the best planner um, yet, but <laughs> trying harder. You know, so yeah, I, I definitely understand that. I think sometimes it's it's hard because I think some people just write the book and then don't think about it and then have to look at the themes later. So right. I think at least I do that. At least just think about theme ahead of time. I guess it's a score right. one for me. I guess I don't know. I've no, noticed some TV shows do that too, where it's like, oh. oh, we did this. See, it was all connected the whole time. And you're like, no, you forgot some details, yeah, right? You you're like you're right. Something. You're right, honey. Yeah. you know you can just you're just like nah like that's not that was not you can just tell you know oh, really? like so yeah I <laughs> I tried hard to do it like 
And that's the thing too. That's another reason why it's like grateful for all these people. Cause I have some people reading book two right now who are like going back and looking at book one and be like looking for plot holes mm. to help me. And I appreciate that so far. I have not done that yet. You know, I've like so many notes, like, and I will say this, like, I actually, I have a made up language in here too, Kazmir. It's like Latin, Japanese mix sort of thing with some Norwegian influences. I have like pages of like expressions and how to write it. And like, I have the alphabet and like oh, grammatical cool. rules. I, I don't just like makeups. I can't just in good conscience make up stuff. Cause I have to like, there's structure. I have to go back to my chart and be like, hey, does this make sense? Yeah, you know I mean, like oh, I'm following cool. the Japanese structure for yeah. how you say sentences, but then I'm like kind of mixing things together and I try to make it sound legit, not yeah. just made up BS, you know? And Which is hard I, when you're writing, you know. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I the other day. The, the fun thing, okay, cause like I did study Japanese for like three years, okay? So like kanji, there's like over 2000 letters, okay? So mm -hmm. that's where you can kind of make up stuff as symbols. I can make up my own symbols to like mean words or like mean things. And then that way it's like a shorthand for instead of writing everything out, it's like okay. three symbols, mean this, you know? So that I have on, in book two, I have a map, just kind of like in book one, like I'll show it's not in English. I purposely left it in a Zocwin, which is basically phonetic English because I want to be nice to myself, but I have the alphabet in the back. So like you can translate it. It's just how you say is how you spell it. You know, I try to make it like Japanese English, phonetic English. Right. But I just wanted you to feel like, Hey, this is a legit system. And I want you to feel like you're actually transported. Like, would you be able to read their language if you went there? No, like, you know, like slightly more immersive. I just, I thought that'd be more fun, just yeah. leave untranslatable, but I'll mention the names in the story, you know, like maybe that's just me, but I, I thought that'd be kind of cool. It's that extra level of like, I'm actually in a different place and I don't yeah. understand this language, you know, because I thought that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. No. And I'm sure an, a major publishing company would be like, you can't do that. And it's like, well, I want to. Beauty, so. beauty of indie though, beauty of indie. That's right. It's like, <laughs> I want to do this. And like, I actually have, this is, this says book one in a Zocwin, you know, like, you know, I just, I had those little details. And when I do book two, I'm probably going to do it in Kazmir and, you know, the other language. Oh, that's cool. So like, oh, that's cool. I like that. Really and, cool. um, okay. Sorry. I just, cause I'm, I'm a nerd, but like book one, like I, I, there's an extra level of world building. I should probably explain. Like I have different countries. They're kind of like based on eye color. That's why book one is blue. That's why Azakwa, blue eyed people. All right, Kazmara, they, you know, I'm not gonna give too much away, but most of the main plot takes place in Kazmara. So it's a red eyed country. And my, my goal was to do like anti-racist, you know, themes, but then I wanted to have diversity in skin color, which means I can have every skin color under the sun with blue eyes, every skin color under the sun with red and orange and gold and silver. You know what I mean? Like, so that's how I, can still have diverse characters, but then, you know, just anti-racist things. It's like, Good you know, idea. I mean, I, I felt like I kind of, I can kind of cheat because it's a made up world. So like, yeah, yeah. hey, look, racism <laughs> is evil, but then I can have diversity. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Disney did that recently. I think it was Disney with like a zombie show. So it's like, they have all different colors of humans or zombies and like they interact, but everybody's like discriminatory towards the zombies. Like, you're a zombie, get out of here. And, and I was just yeah. like, thought it was so interesting that they were using that to teach kids, you know, how not to be, you know, racist and, uh, and discriminatory. And I was like, I was like, wow, that's like a creative, you know, way of using fantasy and sci-fi to, you know, to teach that. And yeah, it's the same thing, right? Because there's like all these different colored zombies, but that doesn't matter because that's not what people care about. They care that they're zombies, you know, and they're discriminatory, yeah. you know, discriminatory towards them. So it's interesting to do the same thing with the eyes. So. Yeah. yeah interesting way to get around your problem there I like that right because yeah. you know it's I don't know I I feel like it's important to have diversity if it makes sense to the story like I I yeah. understand maybe some stories where it's like okay well this isn't a certain region and if you're especially if you're doing like a historical something that'd be a little harder to justify certain characters it's like well what are they doing there that wasn't they didn't meet until later in history or whatever you know like, yeah. I get that there has to be some context but like 
I feel like if you can have diversity, you should, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. That's, I don't know, that's, I'm from California. I have some, I guess, political mixed whatever, you know? So I also come from a very conservative background, so that's ironic, if you will. You'd think I'd be more hard left leaning. I was just talking to him about uh, that on TikTok with a guy, because he's, I'm from Michigan, and Michigan's normally like a Republican state, and um, I think my parents, like back in the day, used to vote Republican, and now they just like they they used to be conservative, and now they're very like they're not as progressive as I am, I would say, but they're still like very progressive, and I'm proud of them for that because just as a side, I just think it's interesting that you know, and um, we study that a lot, you know, within social studies and society for sociology and stuff, and it actually came up recently with a country that we were looking at where the kids were like, oh, well, this country has always been like this, or this city state's been like this. And it was interesting to show as a relevant example for, you know, how things change, you know, in certain countries. So yeah, it's yeah. definitely, it's interesting to think of too, from a fantasy perspective, right? Like would a society that doesn't like drow, for instance, within Forgotten Realms, you know, once the drow come back to the surface and interact with different kids and maybe those drow do, you know, the dark elves do, certain things you know that take away or lessen the prejudices of the other you know beings like how would the next generation of those kids you know interact with them like it's an interesting yeah. it's just interesting when you add it to a fantasy or sci-fi element or you know i always wonder i'm i was i was always teasing my kids at school i'm like you wonder why aliens don't just come down and be like hey what's up guys i'm like would you come down here and want to be discriminated against based off of x y and z so they, like, they watch the news that's why they stay exactly. right? <laughs> they that's saw fair. our elections yeah <laughs> yeah that's no, fair they see everything right <laughs> right oh my gosh uh, I just, so that fifth one i was just curious because you did mention your academy and we talked about characters but would oh, you yeah. say that your academy itself is it its own character like Hogwarts or is it more like a place? Because sometimes people, like I know the city where my heist takes place, this city, I tried writing the city as if it had its own life. Um, it's okay. got a very unique structure to it for a reason. It's got a lot of character and people have these different sayings. My title is relevant to the sayings that people have there, you know, and it's just, there's a lot of background and history. It's kind of like Prague. I feel like Prague's a lot like that. You know, so I just was curious if, you know, you wrote your academy more like its own character or is it just physically a place uh, where, you know, your story takes place? I would say the theme is where Soraya's home is. This oh. is there's a found family element to this oh, cool. well, away from her father. So her friends kind of become like a family unit. Mm -hmm. So it's like she lives technically at Darkwood Academy. So that's where her home is. And in book two, I won't spoil that because I'm not done writing it yet, but also mm -hmm. the same theme is the title is her new home. Oh, and that's cool. kind of the theme I'm going with. And like book three will be the same where her home is. And that's, you know, it's, it's, uh, yes, it's a physical building, but it's also like, but that's where she finds her fan, her new family, yeah, if you yeah. will, like all of her friends, like that's, that's more so like what keeps it together, if you will, or mm -hmm. keeps her sane, I should say, because I'm not very nice. I do throw a bunch of things at my main character and um, see if I can make her crack at some point. That's and cool. that's, you know, that's going to be for later. So it will happen at some point. But right now it's like she has a good group that keeps her stable. And that's what this represents. That's kind of like book one represents like the, the transition from like kid to having to grow up a bit. And then I just keep expanding upon that of like being adult, dealing with different issues too. Cause um, I mean, yeah, Darkwood Academy, like, yeah, that's just her home, I would say. And it represents the good memories of being a kid still. Yeah. You know how at school, like you have mixed feelings. Like, yeah, it can be a terrible experience for some people or like, like for me, it was very mixed because um, I moved a lot. I was homeschooled mm. and I went, like, did you ever see Mean Girls by chance? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just watched I was the homeschool kid, <laughs> yeah. you know, who went into a middle school and I had to deal with that transition. That was kind of hard. And yeah. like, I actually moved halfway um, between my junior year of high school from California to Indiana. And when I went to Indiana, everyone knew my name before I even got there. 
Like I had someone show me around classrooms and everyone like already had their assumptions about me based on being a, a California girl. And they were expecting me to be a Valley girl who said like, um, yeah, every five seconds. That did not necessarily, well, okay, maybe I said um quite a bit. I still do. But I wasn't the typical California girl that they assumed I would be. So I kind of put that experience in here for her, like oh, being homeschooled and like, basically growing up kind of like an isolated little safe town to going to a academy located in a beach city and I I put my own experiences into there you know there are some people who I friended immediately like the outcast group or the other newbies I was not in um my high school yearbook for the junior year of high school when I moved to Indiana I was not in that yearbook that year they had already taken all the pictures I did not exist I did not exist and I wasn't the only one there was someone who moved there two weeks before I did and someone who moved there two weeks after I did so all three of us became friends immediately like the same day we met each other because we're all the outcasts all the newbies and unfortunately one of the biggest cultural differences between coast and more inland people is I grew up with this person we were like in elementary school together and middle school and high school so we're gonna stick together you're new we'll be nice to you but we're gonna like never hang out with you ever <laughs> you know? and you're just like do you like me or not do you want to hang out yeah sure and then crickets you know and you're just like okay I see how it is you know so at least I had my group that kept me stable and yeah, that's yeah. what I throw my main character into that idea of immediate friends with the outcast because they all have it hard of course there has to be a bully because yeah. you know, cool and that was my very favorite. Typical, yeah. Very typical, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 So I there's there's a mix of both my high school kind of situations, like the coastal people, like the really snobby rich kid, and then the hey, we're all outcasts together. Let's become friends right now for survival's sake, you know. So yeah, yeah. That, that's all in there. My personal experiences, more or less, except hers is way cooler than mine. There's magic. I don't <laughs> I, I wish, right? Yeah, yeah. That's fair. I would. I yeah. Know, magic would have made that a lot more, you know, a lot, lot, lot more interesting. Yeah. Bearable. Right. Yeah, I wish. I had, <laughs> I had a great experience, but magic would have made that a heck of a lot cooler. <laughs> right. Oh gosh. Yes. And yeah, that's I got yeah, okay. Anyway, I was like, I can go on another tangent, but I won't. Is there <laughs> anything else you wanted to ask me? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, uh that sixth one. Um, and then we're kind of running out of time, but that's totally fine. We'll definitely get the eighth one there because that's always the one of the most important. But I'm curious uh, about your since you do your own artwork, and we don't have a lot of people on here that do, because a lot of the comics and artists uh don't like to be interviewed. Um, oh. so if anybody knows anybody, send me more artists because I'm I'm really trying. I'm like I'm like, I want you to come on here. We showcase your art. Well, like, I'll, you know, I'm like, and then we'll help you sell more art. I'm like, I don't know how, I don't know, it's frustrating, but I'm glad to have a, you know, an artist and somebody who actually does their own art to ask this. So you do all your own artwork. How long does it typically take you to finish a chapter that way? Like in terms of, you know, like the art itself. All right. So when you show me with the statue, you know, like, outside the city like how long would that typically take you do you think like on average all right so I don't do all in one sitting like what I'll do is I'll sketch first and that would take me 20-30 minutes and then like I either scan it or just take a picture and then pull it off my computer and mm-hmm. I color it in photoshop that takes longer because of shading and all that yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's kind of why it has like this blend so this is all pencil okay this is all pencil for the main color but the way I shade it makes it look like it's kind of like a hybrid design. Yeah, if you will. yeah, yeah, totally. And I really like that. Plus, it does not take forever, which is why I'm very, I, I feel like I'm cheating for everything. Because, like, I know a lot of people will, like, ink things. And inking oh, things work, work smarter, things. you know, not harder. So Right? So, like, I love pencil shading so much. So, everything in here is all pencil shaded. And then I just add color lightly in Photoshop. Like, that's that's, that's cool. my blend. So I can get all the shadows in there and then make it look more 3D, but then not take forever. So like art usually takes me like maybe two or three hours, depending on the piece and how detailed it is. Um, but sketching it out is the fastest for me. Like that's, yeah, sketching usually 30 minutes or an hour, depending upon how detailed I get or how much like shading I do and line yeah. and all that. 
Uh, so the art is actually not the longest part of this. It's the um, writing and I, my schedule is kind of chaotic. So I don't, I never sit down and get everything done in one go. It's like, I think about it for a long time or daydream about it, like while I'm doing like task at work. And then when I get home, then I just like write down the chapter. Or I start writing the chapter and I think about it more. And then like by the end of the week, I have everything written out and then I'll just sketch. Like I'll think about the picture, like what I want to do, like how it correlates to the chapter. And then that's like the fastest part. That's usually at the end, usually on Saturday or Sundays. Uh, I'll sketch it out, get on the computer, color it all in, all my days off, you know, and then chapter's done. And um, I'm very much a one and go kind of person. Like hardly ever do I go back and like rework what I've written. It's editing. That's what I do, but not like the plot or like what's happening in the chapter. It's like once it's down, that's the rule. I have to just... Now that's my cornerstone. I cannot go back and change things. I have to keep adding to it. Not like, oh, whoops! Now I gotta go back and change that, which changes everything else because domino effect, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's more or less my process, if you will. So. Yeah, I was just curious. I I always love seeing people's processes with that. So it's it's good to know. Actually, um, I think some other people um, who had asked me questions about um, similar things will actually get a lot out of that. Um, we're actually looking to possibly, I was thinking in the future, maybe I could learn how to do that because I used to draw a lot and I was thinking about getting the skill back. Uh, you know, it seems like um, more of a profitable venture of doing your own covers, you know, if you can manage to make them look really good. Um, I can't do what you can, but maybe in the, maybe one day, you know, with enough training in 10 years from now, I'd love to take over my own, you know, and I love digital art. I think it'd be so much fun to, you know, just to do it, um, to learn how to do it and, you know, to, to, you know, get the skill back up there and to learn something new. So yeah. art is fun. And I mean, I recommend it. it just means you can doodle exactly what you want. And the way you have to think of it too, is like the mad, your imagination is the limit. Like there's so many pictures online of different poses, different shots and angles you are free to create whatever you want if you can, you know, draw it. Like, yeah, yeah. literally, like, and, um, okay, so, like, this cover idea, actually, one of my friends did a fan art piece, and it is this angle, like, of her flying, and I'm like, that should be the cover of the book, <laughs> you know? And so, like, mm -hmm. if you look at his style, he has a very different style, but, like, it was the flying bit. I'm like, that's the cover. That's yeah, yeah. it. I looked online at different like backgrounds. And I found one in this angle and I was like, that's, oh, that's the angle cool. I want. So like I drew the background and then her, I draw a different thing. And then I was able to like, like a sticker book, like cut her out and put yeah, her exactly yeah. where I want her, you know? So like I'll do backgrounds and characters separate sometimes so I can like move it around however I want, yeah, you yeah. know? But that's, I was like, that's it. That, that makes sense. Like, cause she has, two different elemental magics of air and water for book yeah, one yeah. and therefore there you go so yeah, it's, oh, awesome. it's I think it's fun like I love art like I wouldn't profess to be like super amazing like I I don't think so but like I can work in pencil like that's my best that I can do black and white people who do like oil paintings of oh, like yeah, yeah. real life I'm like how do you do that? That's amazing to me. I, I don't have the patience or like the money to spend on canvases and oil, but yeah, like pencil yeah, yeah. paper, give me that. That's my favorite that I can do that. And I can afford it too. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. and then Photoshop, um, yeah. I have an older computer, 2012 Mac. It's a huge desktop thing. And I got Photoshop as a disc CS3. Uh, I, I will not update my computer so I can keep using it, which is why cool. my computer runs very slow. So I have a different computer for like a laptop for other things, but like that is my art computer. And if that dies on me, I'm going to cry because I have to learn something new. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. No, totally. That's yeah. like, there's pros and cons there. Someday yeah. I'll learn to program right now as long as it's a lie i'm using that so yeah, okay yeah. anyway sorry i'm i'm very good at rambling but okay we're gonna so, end with that last one there uh, just because i'm running out, a little bit out of time uh but okay. i do have that other one so in the future when you do have book two um i'll have you back so we'll have one uh one question down there um which would be nice uh for the future uh so do you have any news updates promos or current projects that you'd like to share with us all right so i will 
I'll promote my band stuff because oh, I do travel around different states and I bring copies of my book to my band shows, which is my husband and I were a guitar violin duo. He plays guitar, I play violin and uh, I sell my art at shows. So I will have copies at our shows and our band name. We are, I'll say again, we're Project Constellation for our band name. I do design for like our stickers and our, awesome. our business cards and like I, so you follow us on Facebook if you want to know where we'll be performing because we we travel a lot on the weekends and we just got back from a six day tour. Oh. So I, I think I told you that in the other interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we arrived at like 3.15 in the morning on oh, Sunday. Wow. So, and then I woke up for the interview that day, you know, so <laughs> it's all good. I don't sleep much. I actually do have these on the road too. Like I made a business card oh, cool. book cover and then there's a QR code for the, um, the printed copy. I have a Kindle as well online on Amazon if if you want a, um, something that's digital. But if you want a printed copy, it's on Amazon. Or if you come and see us at our show, shows and you know watch my husband and I be dorky on stage and do music and make fun of each other the whole time, then there you go. Um, I will show off our music stuff too. Like we have CDs too, oh. singer songwriter and folk punk music. I do all the art for that too. And there's some cool stuff. Uh, my husband does all the songwriting. So like I've written like two and a half songs since oh, okay. 2018, if that tells you anything. I don't know how to write. <laughs> uh, we have magnets too. Also designed wow. that. This is a picture from my book, actually. I just put oh, our cool. project Constellation logo and yeah, there you go. And then we have pins for you punk people out there. So <laughs> like there's there's what we sell our shows that's that's what we bring with us and um yeah there you go like look at check us out on facebook post all our events on there i have a book signing in grand forks on july 29th from 4 to 6 p.m and yeah ferguson's bookstore in grand forks so if you're in north dakota you want to say hi like we're gonna actually play music there too we'll bring oh, our cool. equipment and like do a couple of songs just because we're dorks and why not but that's like my husband and I, like we get to share our art on the side apart from our day jobs. And I, I work at Sam's Club in Grand Forks, North Dakota. So if you want to come say hi, I cake decorate and I drive a forklift. So oh, that's yeah. Great. yeah, so that's, that's there you go. Um, online stuff, I sent you the links. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. those will be in the wall. description per usual yeah. for our audience. So make sure you check out Christina's uh, socials in the description gotta remember i make sure i keep saying that. i forgot the other day and my best friend my tech guy was like yelled at me he's like come on that's why we do all this so yeah so check it out. Sure, yeah make sure you check out below <laughs> yeah exactly audio. same thing so yeah that's all yeah awesome. yeah thank you daniel for having me i know yeah. you have to get going soon um, i always love I, when you know people approach me or you know i can find somebody you know it's like it seems like there's so many people out there but you know, it's it's still really hard to, you know, to get people to come on and, you know, and chit chat about their product. You think it'd be really easy. But yeah, so thank you so much, you know, Christina, for, you know, being able to be so flexible with schedule. I'm sure our audience knows by now that for the last two months, my life's been crazy ever since we found out we're having a baby. So it's just been like one thing after another. That's exciting. I was just trying to do so many podcasts before the baby comes. So that way we have like a whole year recorded in, a, in advance. So, but I really appreciate you being flexible and coming on and talking, uh, you know, with us today, you know, about your product. So if there's anything, you know, I could do in the future to help you out or, you know, you got, you know, you once you got book two or art for it or, you know, or something, you know, audio book news, whatever it is, just, you know, let me know. We'll get you back on and we'll get another episode done for you. Yeah, legit. There was one thing I forgot to add. Oh, yeah. um, I, I gave you the link. I actually animated, drew a book trailer. That's I cool. played violin for it too. And oh, so, wait, so you sent me yeah. that, right? Yeah. Okay. So cool. check, check that, that out, out if you want to see my dorky stuff. Oh, like that's cool. I, maybe I we can give you some commissions. Yeah, you know, maybe we can get some people, you know. <laughs> that's really right. Cool. I, I, I do some art commissions on the side. I can't guarantee anything right now, but like, you know, I'll, I'll try. Depends, but yeah, I'm, I don't bite. Feel free to say hi or, you know, whatever. Like I'm pretty sociable and not worried if I don't answer it's cause I'm working. So like, <laughs> that's where that's what I do. Don't ignore on purpose. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a lot of random stuff, but anyway, Daniel, thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah, no you.
hopefully they'll get more artists like yeah, yeah. some people i know like hey hopefully. you're awesome you know yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm hoping yeah. we're trying to trying to connect more authors with better you know with with artists so we're trying to help the relationship and a lot of people just a lot of artists just don't want to come on i'm like i'm trying to get you business you know and um, I, I used to be more like that and all I can say is you're only hurting yourself if you don't yeah. try you know That's like fair. just yeah. go for it like I'm a dork I've already accepted that I know I'm gonna say or do random stupid things or whatever people will laugh at me like I'm totally fine with that like that that's fine just just go for it what's the worst that's gonna happen oh no your art's amazing I have to check you out yeah. now like, yeah. you know I have like, to pay just, you now yeah. oh gosh darn I want to commission you and you have to make money and do awesome work you know whatever <laughs> like but seriously, just just go for it. So Daniel, you're awesome. Thank you for what you're doing. Good luck with the baby. And oh, thank you so much, it's Christina. So exciting. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, I hope absolutely. you guys have a, a good rest of the day, Christina. And I will you know, I'll send you all information through email and we'll get you all situated for your episode. So sounds good. Super appreciate you. Yeah, have a great rest of your day. You um, yeah, I'll hit you up in the future at some point. Sounds good. Yeah, excellent. Please do. Well, have a good all rest right. of the day and I'll see you later. Yeah, sounds good. Bye. Bye.